Welcome back to Row 9 Studios. I'm Ryan. I'm Kahari. And I'm Justin. And we're here today to talk with you about The Mandalorian, Chapter 4. So what did you guys think of The Mandalorian, Chapter 4? It was one of my favorite episodes. I know we were talking on the phone, you didn't agree with it, yeah. but... It just, even though, like you said, it didn't advance the plot line, you know, you really, you can really start to see the Mandalorian, this dude really has a conscience. I mean, and that's one thing that keeps getting developed. Like, you can tell he is really feeling this woman. He likes her. He's torn. I mean, there's a part of him that actually does want to um, stay with her. But it's interesting because it kind of almost was like Jedi-esque, where, you know, there's no attachment. And he just, you know, she's, he, she's talking about how he can't, he can't stay. He said, you know, you know, he likes it here. You know, what, you know, do you like it here? And you know that he does, but you know, it's like the attachment from the material. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I, I agree with the continuation of him becoming more, having more of a moral compass. Right, and more relatable. And more relatable. But I do at the same time have a little bit of a problem with the whole love story thing in that. Yeah, we talked about that. It's just so fast like it's like he shows up he's the knight in shining armor boom she like falls for him when he's only been there like two days yeah it was kind of forced yeah it's kind of forced so that was a little weird uh, i thought it was interesting the opening uh to this particular episode um it did not feel like star wars um they showed the this small little village and these people working and then these creatures come in that we've never seen before. Yeah. And uh, one of my kids said something like, this This looks like the Lord of the Rings. Are we watching mm -hmm. anything? Are we watching the right thing? And uh, so we waited for it. It was yeah. just, it was different. It was a different type of opening. Um, again, we're seeing this new planet. And uh, Sorgan. Sorgan. Yeah. And off the grid, just like in episode one, where they're trying to get off the grid to get you, away. You would think it it's off the grid, but of? it's not. It's right. actually, I looked it up. It's actually in the Outer Rim. It's near Dagobah. So it's on enough the off the grid. Off the grid. So it's off the grid. <laughs> Dagobah, but, off but the grid. still in the Outer we Rim. We still, yeah. Right. I think one of the biggest things that is probably going to come into play later is the new character, Kara Dune. Yeah. Who the former shock trooper who's hiding on the planet because she basically felt like there was nothing left for her to do in this world post Jedi. Yeah. And uh, you know, at the end she kinda goes away, but I, it, I I would be surprised if she's not a reoccurring character. Yeah, sure. it it was interesting though. I thought that uh when she said she was here first, so find another planet. Like right. she, she just came out with it. It was like, oh, she's got a sorry, she, she's got a Type A personality. Right, she, but this is mine. But you, but you know, the, the interesting part when when um, her and Mando get into this combat, you're like, man, this girl's really got some hardcore training. Yeah, because man. that's the first time you really see he got his butt whooped. Right, you know, like if he didn't have all that, like she's taking these shots. Yep. And he's got this metal armor and she's on, like punching him in, in the armor. In the armor. Yeah, I'm like, like punching him right I'm like, in man, the helmet. Like, knuckles. I'm like, which of course leads to. The you know new new Kermit sipping tea kind of meme yeah, it's of a meme that's Yoda funny. sitting there oh, yeah. sipping hilarious soup classic, now. that is classic yeah, yeah I, I thought that was I thought that was really funny that was really funny it was like he's just standing by just like, watching the fight oh, okay yeah drinking I thought it was funny that was good um, but I told you guys my biggest thing that came out of this episode was when they were there um, that woman asked him about where he came from absolutely and we find out officially that he was not born into uh, the mandalorian it's like he was pulled in by them when he was younger and yeah. we and we kind of knew that already just from the flashbacks but it wasn't official yet yeah Go ahead. I was just saying where he, he, she asks him about the helmet. Yes. Says, when was the last time, mm -hmm. can you take the helmet off? When was the last time you had it off? And he says, you know, 
looking at the kids, I was about their age. Right. And if he takes it off, he can never put it back on. Which is interesting, too, because I know in uh, <clears throat> Rebels, mm -hmm. there's a Mandalorian in Rebels yeah. that does not wear Sabine, her helmet. Sabine takes her helmet off yeah, all Sabine, the time. Yeah. So I don't know how that has changed, if it has right. changed, or she's just doing something she shouldn't be. Right. And it, it, it seems very Jedi-esque to me, like, this is the way. You know where you know the Jedi's have certain once, procedures they follow, and yeah. so the Mandalorians, you don't take the helmet off because once you do, it stays off forever, and it's a very specific set of rules. Just like the Jedi, you know, I, I keep I keep going back to it because it seems like there's a certain, not that they're Jedi, but they have their order is yeah, very it's specific. It's very it's, specific it's in what they do. I am curious as to if it's if it changed over the years. Or if it's whatever this group of Mandalorians he is. Because yeah, going back to Rebels, she's not the only one. We see yeah. the Mandalorian home planet. We see a bunch of them without their masks right. on. Right. They put them on and off all the time in that cartoon. So Where is the difference? Where is right. it changed? Is it, is like it just because said, it's a, this cell of them? Right, right. Or is it what they believe? Or did it change over time? I don't know. And because of that moment that he had with the, the woman. Yeah. Makes it something tells his me, values. yeah, but some, but something tells me we're gonna see more of that. We're yeah. gonna see more to do with the helmet. Yeah, I don't know if we'll get him without. And he his almost takes on. it off. He almost does, but I don't but, know if we're gonna but, get that. But that's right. But that's how you right. know that he likes her because he, you know, he thinks about it. Yeah, he does. You know, because you know, I, I think you know, you talk about how quick her attachment was formed. Yeah. But I think you know, just even in human psychology, sometimes attachment can be formed out of trauma. Yeah. You know, yeah. where where they they've been through some serious psychological trauma. It mentioned that she was a widow, so obviously her husband has died. So here, like you said, your your knight in shining armor, he's come and literally he's made everything right in your life yeah. in a couple of days. I think that that kind of brings us to. Uh, really the climax of this episode was this battle that they were fighting. Yeah. And we learned uh, pretty quickly at that point that it wasn't just these uh, creatures that were attacking. And Rangers. Mando and Carr are the ones that find that out. They go into the forest and they see the giant footprints. Yep. Yeah. And then they end up seeing the ATST. Yep. And so that changes the whole thing. And I think at that point, they kind of realized, like, maybe we got more than we bargained for yep. here. Right. And what are we going to do? And maybe this planet's not as safe as we thought. Right. right. If you have Imperial stuff sitting on this planet, they obviously right. have been there before. Right. And uh, one of them, I forget who you, you guys might remember, one of them really wants to stay and fight. I think Mando even said, like, we can train them. Yeah. Right. And Kara was like, come on, it's two of us versus... Right. 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 ATST, like, come on. Right, right. So there was that, and they kind of went back and forth a little bit. And then we just get preparation. We yeah. get preparation for this, bat this battle and that's I, about and to take And I, I, I like that part, that montage where they're training them. Now, they learn quick. Yeah, and that's the only yeah. thing I'll say. Like, they learn how to fight pretty quick um, in terms of them not being able to hold the sticks and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so, I am not, I'm not quite sure how long of time actually passes there. Right. The only other mention of time, and I told you, after yeah. the battle's over, uh, when they're standing around, they, uh, Kara mentions, well, we've been here for a couple weeks now. So and there was that, but we don't know yeah. how much time from when they first started to when the battle happened. Right. So, and how much time it actually uh, right. elapsed. And that's like, I think, I mean, the battle was fun. It was cool. I think that uh, you got to see how they could work together, Kara and uh, the Mandalorian. Yeah and what it could be because i think she's coming back too but other than that i don't fully know what the purpose of this was yeah and there was a lot of, like character development you get to see different sides of the characters introduce a new character that stuff but, but I, it didn't I, advance the plot anywhere no i i, I, agree, I agree that the plot necessarily wasn't advanced outside the fact that you know at the end somebody else from the guild comes and they're about to take their shot at, at Baby Yoda. Outside of the fact that they know that this place is not safe, this this Baby Yoda is going to continue to be hunted. But I think so. Are they tracking Baby Yoda? Or are they tracking Mando? That's a question I had too. It, no, it, it, it's, it's, it could be both. It, it, I, I, the, only, the only reason why I say they're tracking Baby Yoda 
is because the crosshairs went right on Baby Yoda. They want to take out Mando. Well, he saw he That's saw true. Mando first, right? But but who did he? Who, and then he wanted to right. Yeah. He, he took the shot at Baby Yoda. So I think they're both wanted for different reasons. And I think obviously that's the, the whole crux of the season. What is it that they want with this baby Yoda? And if they want Mando, I, mean, I think he was with, he was taking a shot at Mando. Yeah. And I mean obviously Mando's wanted because he's got baby Yoda in his possession. Right. That wraps up another round table. We want to thank you for watching our video. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And find us on Twitter at Row 9 Studios. And if you can't watch the video, check out the podcast. Row 9 Roundtable can be found on iTunes or Google Play. And on Spotify. And on Spotify. Row 9 signing off. Row 9.